In this proof, we're trying to get a relationship between the time that it takes a satellite to orbit the Earth, uh, which is called its uh, period, which is the letter T, trying to get a link between uh, that value and the radius uh, of its orbit, which is the distance of the object, like a satellite or the moon, to the centre of the Earth. We begin our proof by uh, looking at the diagram uh, and the information that we've got, we have the black dot that has a mass uh, called M, which is our satellite, orbiting around the Earth. The Earth has a mass of capital M, and the distance between the satellite and the centre of the Earth is the capital R. At each point on the orbit of the satellite, it has a velocity of V, that is going to be at a tangent to that orbit. Okay. The first step in the proof is to write down that we can figure out what the two forces are that are going to be working uh, in this case of our satellite. We first of all know that the centripetal force formula is going to say that the mass of the satellite multiplied by its velocity squared and divided by the radius of that orbit gives us the force. But that force of, uh, of the centripetal force has to balance with the gravity force in order for the satellite to remain in orbit. The formula for the gravity force that we're going to use is from Newton's, sec or Newton's universal law of gravity, which is the G, capital G, universal gravity constant, multiplied by the two masses. The two masses in this case are the mass of the Earth, which is capital M, the mass of the satellite, which is small m, and that's divided by the radius squared of the orbit. If we look at the information in the two equations, once they're let equal to each other, we can see that we have some uh, common factors on both sides. Both of them have the mass of the satellite, which we can cancel off. If we look at the radiuses, the radius on the left-hand side will cancel with one of the radii on the right-hand side. So we'll just end up with uh, a radius on the right-hand side. That gives us the formula of V squared, which is the velocity of the satellite in orbit, equal to the universal gravity constant, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth, or the distance from the satellite to the centre of the Earth's uh, centre of mass. If we then look at how long would it take the satellite to orbit the Earth, the time for one full revolution of the Earth is going to be the distance that it covers uh, divided by its speed. So the length of time that we've got for one full orbit is called the period, and we call that the letter T. The distance that it's going to cover is the circumference of that orbit, and the circumference of any circle is 2 pi multiplied by the radius of that circle, and the radius that we've got in this particular example is just the radius, uh, or the distance from the satellite down to the centre of the Earth. So we've got 2 pi by the radius, and we have to divide into that the velocity of the object. If we square both sides of this formula, we get the period squared is equal to 4 pi squared multiplied by the uh, distance squared, or r squared, all over v squared. At this point, what we're going to do is let the v squared in this new formula equal to the v squared that we were after working out from earlier. So the bottom part of that fraction, uh, the denominator, is going to become, instead of v squared, it's just going to be gm over r. So we're just going to substitute that into our formula uh, for the period squared. So our new formula, once we sub it in, we'll still have t squared on the left hand side equals, looking back at what we had, we had 4 pi squared and r squared on the top. So 4 pi squared 
and r squared on the top of our fraction. But now instead of the v squared, what we're going to do is we're going to use this fact that v squared is just gm over r. And we're going to plug that into our formula. So we have gm over r in the bottom part of our fraction. Now, if we divide a fraction into another part, it's the same as basically turning that fraction upside down and multiplying. So, if we do out the maths fully, we have the period squared, which is t squared. The top part, the numerator of our fraction, is still 4 pi squared r squared. But what we're going to do is instead of dividing by gm over r, we're going to turn that upside down and we're going to multiply it. So we multiply by R over GM. And what that will give us then is on the top part, the numerator of this new formula, we have that the period squared is equal to 4 pi squared. The R and that should be squared. The R squared multiplied by R is the radius cubed over the universal gravity constant by the mass of the larger object. So what we now have is a formula that no longer depends on the velocity of the satellite. It no longer depends on the mass of the satellite. The only two variables that the period depends on is the distance from the satellite to the center of the earth and also the mass of the earth. We can apply this to any of the other planets. We could use even the sun as the larger mass and we could have the satellite as being the earth orbiting around the sun. And we can even extend this out to larger systems even expanding it out to our own galaxy. Our sun could be the smaller satellite orbiting around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. So again, t is the period of the orbit. 4 pi squared and g are all constants. The r is the distance from the satellite to the center of the larger uh, object. And then m is the mass of the larger of the two objects in kilograms. And that is a relationship of the period of an orbit compared to its radius.